and I go, why? Why can't? Why can't? I'll just turn. I'll just turn Jeff down and make sure that um, that he talks a little bit louder. I said, I, I don't. That's all right. Don't you think? That seems like the easiest thing to me. Yeah, I mean, I. Why can't? Why can't? Right. I'll just turn. Yeah. Got about ninety seconds. Hello, everybody. We've gotten so many compliments. I think they're compliments <laughs> about uh, <laughs> about doing this segment. And again, in case you don't always listen to the front, I don't wear this shirt every day. Well, I guess I kind of do. But I don't wear this shirt normally outside the studio. It just is, gets really cold in here. And so I just have a jacket that I just put on for two or three hours. I probably need to take it home and wash it this week. I think I got, I think I got toaster strudel thing here. I thought you were trying to show how cold it was in here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Sit on this one. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking care of business on a Friday. So my daughter says, uh, yeah, I watch until you go on the air. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Megan. She's in. So she's doing a political, uh, not political science, but current, current events class. And... Uh, <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah, we need you to watch the debates and any of your local elections you want to talk about or whatever. <laughs> well, let's tur- make sure you turn off the news as soon as you do, as soon as you hear me coming through. Talking about the debate. Oh, Business and working oh. overtime. Ow! I'm going to try to speak louder for all you guys. Yes, we're going to have, we're going to, Jeff's going to talk louder. Come on, man. Bring it. Now, back to the wake up call with Bill Quinn. Brought to you by Phillips Drugs on Richmond's Classic Hits, 101.7 The Point. 65 degrees on your wake-up call. It is 645, almost 646, and uh, it is time to take a look at the headlines. Jeff Lane has uh, jumped over from uh, the newsroom. Uh, well, I don't know. You kind of sashayed, I think. Sashayed. Right? Yeah, that's I think that, is, yeah, that's maybe not a hop, but uh, over there. Uh, good morning. How are you? Doing well. All right. Okay. Well, I know that we've got a lot to get to, so I'll just let you do that, and I'll I'll turn you down so you can speak louder for our Facebook right. Live people. Boy, we do have a lot to get to this morning, and let's start in downtown Richmond, where uh, a lawsuit has uh, now been filed against the city, at least the start of a lawsuit through a tort claim notice, and it's been filed through Phillips or by Phillips Drugs and owner Pete Zaleski, and uh, what we're what we're talking about essentially is this. Uh, the Stellar Complete Streets construction project was, was going on, and, and according to, uh, to Zaleski, once it was done, uh, and during the course of some heavy rains, he found out that the water uh, that should have run off into the street was actually going the other way because the sidewalks were not uh, graded properly. They were actually slanted toward his building. Now, this is according to the contents of this tort claim. And the result of that is that the water is seeping into the foundation of his building. Uh, so far, he says that uh, he's incurred about $7,700 in water damage and that he has tried repeatedly to get a resolution from the city, but the problem remains unresolved. Yeah. Um, I wonder, are there other businesses going through this? Because the same contractor did a lot of the sidewalks around the path, the bike path, so I'm wondering if anybody else has a problem. Well, there are allegations of at least two other buildings that have uh, that have suffered the same the same sort of fate. I have not been in contact with either one of those yet. Okay. But I will say that there are multiple elements of this story, more elements that I can cover in one day. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue this into next week. I'm going to be off on Monday, but we will continue it on okay. Tuesday and talk about some other elements. We've got a lot of documents related to this and and points of view on the issue from the city, from the designer. Okay. And so we'll be covering all that uh, beginning on Tuesday of next week. Okay, very good. All right, what else? All right, um, boy, uh, a disturbing arrest yesterday. 21-year-old Sean Johnson of Richmond booked into the Wayne County Jail on the highest level of felony child molestation. What makes it even more disturbing is the fact that on his Facebook page, he describes himself as a specialist at a local youth treatment center. Now, I've not been able to confirm that yet, and I won't be able to do that until that center opens at 8 o'clock, but I will be trying to do that. Um, over the objections of many, the Dr. Oz Show did air yesterday a segment uh, about the Dennis Intermediate School shooting. The mother of Brandon Clegg appeared. It, it was really focusing on red flag laws and not the incident at Dennis itself. Uh, we did obtain permission to air some of the audio, but we chose not to do that because I know that a lot of people were upset about that. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, that, that's a tough one, right? It, it yeah. was. Uh, it, it definitely was. 
Uh, another update with the Indiana Gateway Industrial Park and their never-ending effort <laughs> to find a wastewater treatment solution. Uh, they, the county offered a million dollars to help expand wastewater treatment, but it came with a, a catch. And the catch was three seats on the sewer board. They talked about it more this week, and the sewer board apparently is against that. They're, they, it does not appear that they're going to take that offer. So they're going to try again to find another solution. That's making a really long story really short, by That's the way. That's good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> A uh, new stop sign's up in the depot district. It went up yesterday. It's a three-way stop sign at the intersection of North 10th and E. The idea with that is to generally slow traffic going into the depot district from the east. And uh, there was also discussion that it's really hard to turn onto E Street from 10th because uh, the building there, would, which would be to your left as you try to make that turn, blocks of you until you get out into the street itself. So right. uh, that, that stop sign is up. It is permanent. And one quick other construction note. The Lamar Lundy Bridge in Richmond is going to be the, uh, the the scene of some more construction, some repairs going on there on the surface, some lane restrictions for nearly a month and a half at the Lamar Lundy Bridge. Um, okay. A couple Go. of other things yeah, real quick. Yeah, sure. No, yeah. No. Um, we are now officially, at least part of the Whitewater Valley, is officially in a drought, a moderate drought for eastern uh, Dart County now. The rest of the Whitewater Valley, including Richmond and Wayne County, is officially classified by the U.S. Drought Monitor as abnormally dry. I went back and did some checking. In the last 23 days at the Richmond Airport, there has been only one day where there's been measurable rainfall, one out of 23, and even that was only one one hundredth of an inch of rain. Mm. Not much. Mm. And I'll end with this pork festival, highlighting uh, the festivals this weekend. Great story yes. about the pork festival. Yes. Go ahead. Lots of, lots of cool stuff going on there. Kicks off with a pancake breakfast, 6.30 tomorrow morning, a parade 10.30 tomorrow morning. Lots of good stuff. Check it out. No admission, right. by the way. Right. I was in a drought, and Casey came home. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teasing. Teasing. All right, I got to do a couple things. Got to do a couple things. Couple. Like find another job. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Preble County Pork Festival. Um, the the so National Pork Month is April, and years and years and years ago, Preble County said, well, we want to have a festival, but April is kind of weird weather. You don't know what you're going to get. So doing a festival at the fairgrounds may not make sense. So they went to the Farmer's Almanac. Did I tell you this story before? No. They went to the Farmer's Almanac, and they said that they wanted to find, and go back into history, to find the driest weekend of the year, historically. And that has been the third weekend in September for as long as people remember. And this weekend looks, other than a couple passing showers, looks really good. Really? I never yeah. heard that story. And so they said, we're not going to do it in April. We're going to do it We're going to do it later. And that's that makes sense. So that's why, you know, that kind of thinking is why uh, they've had such a successful uh, uh, run. So I called some people idiots yesterday. And boy, did I hear about it. <laughs> I heard about it a lot. So here we're going we're gonna to back up and clarify those statements because I still think there are idiots in the room. And I want leaders to... Wait a minute, in the room? No, well, well I'm, when they're talking about consolidation. Okay. So, Senator Rotz, who's a proponent of doing this consolidation, I think he sees the writing on the wall. He did not go to any of the community meetings. we got we got to get him uh, here to continue to talk about it. And the people that I was saying that were being kind of idiots and stupid um, are the people that think that, that doing nothing is the best way to go. That they're just, you know, they're just kind of... Well, well, we'll wait this out. Or the, the people that aren't going back to those meetings. You know, Nettle Creek uh, pulled out. Uh, Richmond, I don't think, was ever invited. Uh, Centerville pulled out. Or, and it's because nobody wants, to, nobody wants to deal with the truth. And the truth is, monies are getting tighter. And until you can write a blank check and pay teachers whatever you want, you're never going to be able to fix this problem. I mean, it's just, you're just not. We have too many schools and too many employees for the number of kids that are helping foot the bill with our tax dollars. And that's it. So I, I apologize. If you are a proponent of having continued conversations about consolidation, you are not silly. You are not dumb. But we got to get Senator Rotz in the room. I mean, you, you, if you're going to propose these kind of things, come and come and take some take some hits on it you know uh so i promised i would take care of that and and just say not everybody's an idiot just the people that don't agree with me <laughs> how's that oh, there you go i'm sure that cleaned it up i'm sure all right let's talk about our question of the day um who should pay on a first date 
You know what I'm going to say. I think I chivalry think not, is not dead with Jeff Lane. That's, that's what right. I'm thinking. Ninety percent of the time when you ask me stuff, I think you know how I'm going to answer. And I, I do. And I say always, always, every time the guy pays. Yeah, and they. So I think I'm fine with whoever asks. That's fine. I just couldn't. I just could not let someone pay for me on a on a first date. I just couldn't do it. I'd just be like, I'd I'd throw, I'd it wouldn't work. If I can't pay, it doesn't work. Um, so, but I I do get that. I also agree with what I said uh, uh, earlier. Don't go on a first date. Don't go to dinner or a movie on a first date. Terrible idea. No, no, no. Coffee, get a beer, something like that. And and someone said, do guys still ask people? Still ask women out? Yeah. It it's just. It's difficult. We don't want to seem pervy. We we don't have really good lines. You know, I mean, you don't say things like "drought is over" on the radio. I mean, you, you know, we're not very <laughs> smart people. Guys are not smart, and so give us a hint, ladies, if you want us to ask you out. Kind of, I don't know, swing the hair, do do the share. <laughs> you know, what I mean, do something. <laughs> All right, we gotta get out of here. Jeff Lane, you're the best. Thank you, man. See ya. I don't know. Did he sound better, everybody? Uh, let me know. Uh, the woman my girl pays. Oh, okay. Oh, Terry, 17 years still waiting for my wife to pay. <laughs> do, you see Hill do you see Hillard's comment? Oh, you're the best, Terry. All right, guys. Um, hopefully, you can hear Jeff a little bit better. And uh, we got to get into some news. So, coming up, uh, we've got Susan Isaacs, uh, Diaper Drive. Did I put 810 or 710? Oh, heck. Do oh, 710, not 810. I'll make that correction. Doing the dry, diaper drive coming up at 7. Talking about that. You know, it's really strange, state legislators, really strange that uh, food stamps can't pay for laundry detergent or diapers. We'll give you the food, but we're not going to actually clean, clean up the messes. Anyway. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you.